be live. Um, the webinar doesn't start yet, um, so we have another minute to go, but we wanted to um, say hi to everyone uh, that joined in uh, so far. Um, and uh, it would be great if uh, you see a chat uh, on your screen. Um, it would be great. Um, can you hear as well? Just let us know um, in the chat. So we know that the audio works good to everyone. So there's one minute. So uh, whoever needs another, uh, sounds good. Thanks, Rebecca. So whoever needs another uh, glass of water, um, now is the uh, now is the time to to grab that, and uh, we will start very soon with our webinar about how T Systems engages millennials with their employee app. So looking at the time, sounds good here. That's great. Um, so looking at the time, I would say, um, let's get started. Um, welcome um, to, to our uh, webinar. Um, my name is Frank Wolf. I'm one of the founders of Staffbase. Um, Staffbase is a, um, two years ago, we would have said employee app. Now we would say we are an employee experience platform. Um, we have uh, more than 150 customers worldwide, and we see that our customers use Staffbase um, as uh, a way to better reach and connect uh, with all of their employees. And usually when we uh, start to talk with our customers, one of the, the first question is, how are others doing it? What are experiences from other companies? Uh, what are their use cases? How do they deal with data security? How do they deal with uh, push notifications. So our goal today is um, not talk uh, so much about staff base, but actually talk to one of our customers. Um, and I welcome Suzanne Vanitschke from T-Systems um, in, in the webinar. Hello to Thanks. everybody. Thanks a lot for joining, Suzanne. Um, and uh, uh, the, the case uh, why uh, um, this example is especially uh, interesting is uh, T-Systems Systems is one of our early customers, so they use the app now for uh, a lot longer than than uh, uh, a year, and they um, have a lot of uh, experiences. They've uh, tried a lot of use cases. They had a, a lot of very interesting learnings and plans with the app. So I think it's a great case study to look into this in more detail and learn uh, about them. Before we start off. Um, one organizational uh, topic. We will um, have an overall time of about 30 minutes for the webinar. And uh, whenever you have questions uh, for Suzanne, feel free to put uh, these uh, questions in the chat. And I will um, have a look at this and, uh, and ask this um, as we go along. We will do a recording of the webinar, and uh, this will be available um, in the next couple of days uh, for you to review or even send it to your colleagues. But now um, over uh, to Suzanne. Suzanne is uh, Internal Communications Manager um, at T-Systems uh, Multimedia Solutions. And Suzanne, um, the color, the, the logo looks a lot like uh, T-Mobile. Um, can you explain to us what is your company doing? Yes, I can. Um, we. Yeah, we don't sell phones, mobile or normal phones. Um, we have solutions for digital users, and our portfolio starts with e-commerce solution, websites, intranet, um, industry 4.0 solutions we um, sell to our customers, and of course also mobile solutions, um, of course apps. So we sell them and we use them on our own. Yes, we have uh, 1,860 employees in Germany and seven locations um, in Germany. Perfect. And looking at your uh, typical employees uh, compared to um, uh, what we see at our other customers, typically we see 
um, customers uh, coming in with uh, a lot of non-desk employees, so employees out in the field on the production floor. Um, so they uh, uh, they want to use the app to better reach them. Um, I think it's a bit different for your employees. Um, they are all sitting at desks, right? Yes, yes, they do, and they all have their own notebook, and um, so they can read our um, corporate news in the internet every time when they open the notebook. And um, I think the average age of our um, employees is 35, and 90% of them, I would say, they are digital natives, so they are used to all the mobile solutions and solutions. Um, yes. So we would uh, talk in, in terms of generations, it's millennials or yes. uh, generation Y, or then the next one is like, I think, generation Z, the gamers. Um, I know you have a lot of also young employees coming in right from college um, um, in, into the company, right? Yes, we do. And they are used to all the um, things like apps and yes, they can, they all have their own desk and their own notebook and they can, Actually, they could read our internal news um, via notebook every time. And that's, that's uh, I think, a very interesting point. Um, looking at your typical employee, um, what was your reason to use an app, right? Um, because they could uh, use the internet. What was the main reason? Yes, um, the main reason was um, use what you sell. So um, as I mentioned, we also sell the app or other apps and we want to use them on our own. And yeah. another reason is um, or was that our employees are often on business trips and they don't have the time during their normal work day to uh, check the internal communication news in the normal intranet. And so we want to get them on another way, on the mobile way, that they could read the news when they have time um, at the airport or in the train or whatever. And they don't have to open their notebook and to dial via YPN and read it in the internet. Yeah. Um, you already started to talk about uh, news. Um, let's have a look at the use cases that you have uh, within the uh, app. Can you talk about... Uh, what you started off with in terms of use cases and uh, maybe also what what uh, came in the, in the app after uh, after a couple of months mm -hmm. as we started with uh, three channels um, first of all there were our corporate news we duplicated them from the internet into the app and um, then we had customer news and daily market news and we launched the app um, at our yearly innovation bar camp, it's a big, big event in our company. And there we launched the app and we had an extra channel with information round about the um, event with live reporting and uh, the agenda and things like this. And uh, short after the launch, we added important things like the meal plan, very important for all employees every time <laughs> or every day, and uh, general information from our offices in Germany. Um, as I mentioned, seven um, offices we have in Germany. And um, then we start with other use cases, for example, um, an advent calendar or um, car sharing opportunities. And at the beginning of this year, we launched the uh, phone book in the app. So um, we have from every um, employee the telephone number in the app. And um, two days ago, we launched the chat function and so these are use cases that we have now okay perfect um you mentioned one use case and i think that's uh um, sounds like a german specific use case but i think it's really interesting uh, to look at this because it also has like a gamification and yes. fun to this um can you explain a bit more what's the event calendar what you do with it yes um, so we launched the app in September and three days after this in December we launched our advent calendar. Um, here you have every day in December beginning on the 1st and ends on the 24th of December um, for questions and the user they can answer every day this for question. For each question they have 20 seconds time to answer. And then we have um, at the end the ranking of the best players, I think 20 players, the best 20 players. And um, they could win the prize. So the first 10 participants, they could win um, a good prize. 
and they really they, they loved it to join this um, event art calendar and at the weekends that's the third screen here we had um no questions we had some cooking recipes and christmas decoration trip tips and something like this because um, we want no disadvantage for the users they didn't use um, the app on the weekends so only on the normal working day we had the question and yet it was really really common and they asked us in 2016 please do it again it was so funny and we liked it yes and we will do it again in 27 uh, 2017 again great a great example i think it's uh, um we see this as an example also in other companies where uh, you use this um not just during christmas but for any other topic that you have at a specific a uh, specific occasion so you could like say you have a safety month right um, and you have yeah. during that month a couple of information and actions even an event and this is something that can run through the month where you have these questions um, employees can answer you have the leaderboard so you have a lot of engagement around a specific topic that uh, that you can play as part of the app right so that's uh, i think it's a great example mm -hmm. uh, on how to do it. One other use case that I know um, is pretty important for you as a company is, is events. Um, can you talk a bit more events, like what kind of events do you do with your employees and how do you use the app to support these events? Yeah, um, we have two big events um, during the year. First of all, our innovation bar camp. I have a, okay. Sounds um, crazy. And um, we have uh, two big events uh, during the year. One of this is our innovation bar camp in September, and the other one is the kickoff at the um, beginning of the year in January. And um, to use the app for the event works perfect because the um, participants are used to have apps for other events. And though we have both together in our um, company app, and for example, we had our we had the e-tickets in the app. And um, the other thing was that we had um, um, a voting in the app for our bar camp, our innovation bar camp, and a timetable. So they could have their, their own content, their personal content around the event in the app. And um, we added this personal content with live stream and with the agenda and normal interesting content around and the events and yeah they really really like it they the participant <clears throat> participants they use the app the whole day and they publish pictures and use it for every use case that we think could work so it was very great and in september 2017 we have our innovation bar camp again and we have a lot of use cases that we will um yeah launch at these in, this, in, in the September this year. Perfect. I think it's uh, events are an incredibly uh, great use case in two ways. Um, and uh, I think uh, you are, your case is a good example for both ways. One is um, the app helps to support the event during the event, um, like get content there, get uh, everyone to vote for, for topics and organize through the event. And the other one is actually use the event to launch an app, launch new features uh, within within the app, um, and uh, just like have it as a communication vehicle. So we see it um, even also for uh, specific locations. So you say we have a plant that goes live, we have the app goes live for leadership, uh, for other specific business units. So I think events is a, is a key, um, yeah, key key measure to to introduce an app and also uh, have a have a great use case on an ongoing basis. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Um, looking at results, um, how do you measure success with the app? So, what are the uh, the kind of numbers you look at, and how does did this develop over time? Okay. Um, first of us of all, um, after three months, we had more than fifty percent of our employees in the app. That was a very good result for us because, um, as I mentioned, all employees can read the content also in the internal intranet. But um, we could see that we reach another target group for, from our employees. Um, 
all the employees, they are often on business trips and, uh, and don't have time during their working day. So we achieved, achieved now them and we achieved one of our big targets to reach them with our news, with our company news. Because yeah. we are a very fast growing company and we have a lot of new projects, new um, customers and new products and it's very important for our employees to, to know this and so we have to reach them with our um, corporate news that they read this and know, okay, that's now also our customer and we have now this project ongoing, that's fine. So that was one of our big targets and we achieved it with the app. Okay, um, you, uh, um, do you see, I know you have a couple of news in the intranet um, and uh, uh, you have news in the app and I know there's uh, some overlapping but uh, um, in, the, in the meantime you also uh, published, let's say, some exclusive content just in the app, right? Um, do you see in terms of interaction, um, I know you have in both uh, platforms the ability to comment and like, do you see differences there? Um, we see the, I see the difference with the target group. Really the other um, employees, they comment in the app and other employees comment in the, uh, like in the app then in our internal intranet. So we can see there's really like new employees that we can reach with the app. We couldn't reach them before we launched the app. They just didn't read our um, internal cooperation news and now we can reach them and they, they discuss in the app and and the other part they discuss in the intranet. Yeah, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. It would be great to dive down into these groups and understand who exactly, um, yeah, who's who's commenting there. Is it the younger employees or uh, whatever, right? So that's, uh, um, uh, that, that would be interesting as a next step, next step right? Perfect. Yeah. Um, Looking at a couple of questions that we get uh, many times from potential customers that think about an app, and I uh, just want to run through this because um, I, I know you have uh, quite some experience with them. Um, first one is, uh, is this mandatory, yes or no? Um, we see at our customers in most of the case, I would say 99%, it's not mandatory to have the app, but the question is always, Will employees still download it if it's not mandatory? How do you achieve that they download it? How do you? <clears throat> it? Uh, for our um, employees, it's also not mandatory to download the app. Um, but I think it's very interesting for them But because they want to know what's going on in our company and they can read it now mobile on the smartphone or on the tablets when they are um, on a business trip, for example. And then we had, um, or we still have a lot of special features and content in the app. And so we have lifestyle content in the app and we have special features like the advent calendar that we just mentioned and yeah. the um, chat function that we launched two days ago. Um, but we also have um, features, for example, like car sharing opportunities, though they can um, offer car sharing opportunities by car or by train, for example, to the other office locations in Germany. And we have the phone book in the app with all employees and their numbers and their um, email addresses. And uh, yeah, that's, so it's, it's, it makes fun for our employees to use the app. They have not only the corporate news in the app, they have also a lot of other information, a lot of other features and, um, it's yes, so it's they like to use the app, and that's very very important. And then they download the app. Perfect, perfect. I think it's um, as you say, if you find with the use cases that you have in the app, if you find a convincing answer to the question "What's in for me," um, then yes. then this is exactly what what uh, what what happens. And um, the other discussion is: Are there employees? Probably there are that like raise the question and say, hey, this is my private device, this is my private time, uh, leave me alone with this. Do you have this a lot? Um, how do you deal with that? Um, 
we have those employees, of course, and we say it's okay, it's fine, they don't have to use it. Then they um, read um, our corporate news in the internal internet, and it's fine for us. Um, I think it's about 30% from our employees, and yeah. maybe we can get them with another feature that we launch in the next year, and maybe we will, will never get them into the app, so it's fine, it's okay for us. Yeah, yeah. okay, perfect. Um, there is, uh, um, it's, the app is on private devices, um, mm -hmm. in, in uh, um, I think also in, in, in your case. Um, the, um, how do you deal with security and like confidential information? Um, so um, is there specific information where you say this is not allowed to go on the app? Um, and especially also, is there, what's the percentage, right? So um, do you have enough content? For the app, or would you say there's so much confidential content we can't write anything in the app? So, um, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, um, compliance is very important for, for our company, and um, we are not allowed to publish news from new customer customers when we have no reverence agreements with them, and we are not allowed to publish business relevant numbers and data. So, um, we don't publish these news in the app. But yeah. um, that affects only 5% of our news. All the other content we can put into the app. And yeah. um, for example, with the business relevant numbers and data, so we don't use the numbers. We describe it in words and we put the other, uh, the other news in the app. So the numbers are in the internal internet and the news without numbers um, is in the app. But yeah. um, I can see that our CEOs, they think about, okay, is the number really so important or should we have one news in both applications and without any numbers, we only describe it's good working or it's not so good working. And so at the moment, it's really, I think, less than 5% of our news that we could not publish in the app. Okay, very interesting. Very. Um, we have one question about, can you show the main page of the app, how it looks like? Um, looking at the slides, um, I see we don't have the main page in the slides. Mm -hmm. um, two um, ways to answer the question. I think uh, we can uh, uh, see if we can provide it afterwards. But can you describe what uh, what's uh, on the main page of the app? Yes, our main page is at the moment um, the our main channel. It's called My MMS, so um, that's a channel with um, our corporate news and also lifestyle lifestyle news, and um, so you can um, go through the news and can read them. It's only really the news channel. We will launch the um, star page from Stuff Page, the new star page. I hope in August or so, and then we have um, another star page with um, I think these. Um, how do you call it, Bühne? Uh, yeah, this like it's a stage where yes. um, this means you have a a better slide or to go through the top news, and uh, and this start page will also allow to have top links like tiles on the main page where you go. Hey, this is go. You have like the the stage. You have the uh, tiles that goes to directory or chat, so to main functions, and then you have like a new stream um, yes. coming. Right, so that's maybe talking about start page from our experience. Um, in early days, like a couple of years ago, employee apps would usually have a start page that looks like um, a a couple of like a link list with a couple of tiles or icons with links, and one link would say news, and one link would say directory, whatever you want to do there. And what we learned, it's a great idea to have the news right on the start page. So. Um, it's not a good idea that I open up the app and I don't see news right away because usually people go in with a specific thing like I want to look up somebody on the directory, I want to have a look at the meal plan, or I want to do a, a survey. Um, so it's a great idea to show news right away um, and then give a, a link to other services that you have uh, within the app. Right? Looking at uh, push notifications. Um, it's a great feature that comes with mobile. So whenever you have a native app, um, you can send uh, push notifications uh, to it. And we at Staffbase, we say that's a game changer. 
um, for internal communications. Um, what is your experience in terms of numbers and also how do you handle it? Um, we handle it like this that we push every second day and um, we push always short before lunch time or at the end of the working day because then the users have the time to read um, the news or to bookmark it for later on. And we can see in the statistic that our push, push messages read three times more often than the other uh, news. And um, when we push, for example, today, and we pushed two days ago, the last time, then we can see that um, all the news we published in between in these two days, they uh, read more often then. Yeah. So we, we use the push notification like saying hello from the app have a look here is important news we only push really important news and um yeah that works very good for us and we can say that 75 percent of the users have enabled push notification and we don't want to annoy them with pushing too often so that's why we say okay every second day not more often than this perfect it's uh, exactly what we see um, as a best practice, um, like with with great power, what push is all about um, comes great responsibility. So it's a best practice to give push just in the hands of a few who know what they do. Um, especially, uh, we don't see that uh, many of our customers give like push to local editors because um, usually they are not really good at uh, connecting with each other and saying, "Hey, I have something." pushing out today, um, please don't push anything else today, right? So that's uh, that's why it's usually good to have push um, and the decision, what do we push within one team, right? And if you uh, if that team is well aligned, then it's uh, that's uh, also something that can be uh, done across uh, locations uh, or even like across countries, right? Um, looking at uh, another topic is, uh, uh, workers council um, or union uh, uh, involvement um, typically um, this is something where uh, these these uh, uh, organizations want to talk and want to want to kind of approve the whole initiative um, how did you do this um, at t systems our work council was fine because it's not man mandatory for all, for everybody and um, we we showed them the app from the from the first of the beginning, so to say, and um, then they say, okay, that's fine, and um, we found a solution when we are allowed to push. So we said, okay, we don't push before nine a.m. and we don't push after five p.m. Only in the in the time between nine and five we can can push. So and also not on the weekend. So we don't annoy the employees in their free time with staff from um, the company. Yeah. So I'm fine with this. It works right, quite good with our workers council. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we see in that case, it's, uh, it's typically a, a thing that, that also plays into their agenda, right? Because um, they want to have more transparency for employees. They want to have more feedback. Uh, for employee from employees to management to the organization and that's basically what it's all about if you if you give this in the hands of all um, you, you create a channel more transparency more opportunity to explain what the organization is doing why right so that's um, why we we often receive this as an initial question but we we in most of the cases we don't see a lot of a pushback actually from unions or workers council however you want to uh, name it right um, there is uh, a, uh, a a question that we often get about governance um, of news um, especially because if you have a a um, let's say distributed organization with many locations I think that's also the case uh, for you how do you organize um, central versus local editors on your side we we have four central editors um 
as you mentioned, in one location in, in Dresden. And we have a five to ten local editors. And um, all editors all editors have to sign an operating instruction before they can start editing. And yeah. in this operating this, this instruction, um, we mentioned uh, things like push notifications only between 9 and 5 and um, no content with uh, business relevant numbers and data and so on. And local editors are not allowed to push news. They can call us or they can write us an email and say this news is so important. Um, I think we have to push it and then we say, okay, we will do this for you. So that works quite good for us. Um, next month, we start a new project with five of our communities, our internal communities in the company. Um, each community gets an own update channel and uh, every user can publish um, updates in the community channel. So it's also not allowed to push, but every user can be an editor, so to say, only in this channel. And we will see how it works. We are, yes, we also will be in a little bit of surprise if it works good or not. We will see. Great. Um, so looking at the time, one last quick question. Um, um, and you already talked about plans for the future. Um, in general, um, what are the big topics that you want to, that you see in the app or you want to uh, do with the app in the, in the like upcoming months or even years? Um, one big topic uh, will be the pre-boarding and onboarding from new employees. We yeah. will um, have there a lot of use cases in the app. And um, we also can think about use cases for e-learning in the app. So these are both the use cases in the app. And yeah. then we, we can hear the wish from our employees. They want more mobile work-related work -related use cases. For example, like um, their personal salary statement or their working time account mobile. They want to read it and they want to um, see it as mobile. And we have to prove how we can realize these requirements and how can we can connect these with the app. So yeah. that both belongs together. This is one of our big targets in the next, I think, one or two years, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, I mean, this fits very well to what we see as a major trend in the area um, to think about employee experience as, a, as an overall and see engagement and communication use just as a part of it, of a, of a whole journey, a, a, a long touch point, like, as you say, services, onboarding, e-learning, and so on. And, not even uh, necessarily have this all in one app, but uh, have like one entry door into that experience. And then from there you have either integrations or you have links um, to these other services, right? So that's, uh, I think it's a great uh, vision to, to move forward. Um, looking at the time, um, I need to, uh, uh, better we need to stop uh, talking, uh, unfortunately now, um, if there are, um, immediate questions uh, from the audience. Now it's the time to ask uh, them um, as a, um, before I move on, thanks a lot, Suzanne, for your time. Um, uh, thanks a lot for these very, very interesting insights about T-Systems. Um, the next webinar is coming up um, end of June, June 28. Um, we will have uh, the Franciscan Children's Hospital in Boston here, and they talk uh, about the FRAN, which is their uh, communications uh, platform and employee app. And uh, thanks a lot at this time for joining in. Um, we hope to see you next time. Um, if you want to learn more about StaffBase, uh, feel free to go to staffbase.com. Um, there's a ton of information. There's also a way to request a demo and also test StaffBase right away. So again, Susan, thanks a lot for joining in. Thanks a lot um, to all the participants for your time and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.